Great to have with us today, Willie Sawry. How you doing, Willie? I'm doing good, doing good. Hope you are. I am as well. Of course, Willie, a member of the legendary Dixie Melody Boys. And you relatively new, especially when you consider the longevity of the Dixie Melody Boys, correct? Absolutely. I am a baby in the Dixie Melody Boys um, history and legacy. You know, I was thinking earlier in the day, trying to think of groups that had been around as long as the Dixie Melody Boys had. The Oak Ridge Boys came to mind. They've been around since the 40s. Um, outside of that, I cannot think of many groups who've got 50-plus years mixed together, maybe a family. Yes, um, you probably could count the Hoppers and the Kingsmen, and that would just about wrap it up. How do you account for the longevity, all those years still going? Um, perseverance, um, being able to take the good with the bad, and just knowing that every day the Lord's going to provide. Well, we got to get a little backstory on you, because from what I understand, you had actually done some singing with the Dixie Melody Boys on a fill-in basis, and it was kind of a, at least based on what I read, Ann O'Neill was like, well, you know, he's, he's got his work and stuff, so why even ask him to go full-time, because I know he's not, uh, but, but tell us about your history. Well, I started singing back in 19... 88 as a result of seeing the Dixie Melody Boys in concert as the first professional group I ever saw sing live. Um, they were from just up the road in Kinston, which was about 30 miles from my town that I lived in at the time. And we were fortunate enough to be able to sing with them in our church the following year as sort of the opening act. And it just was surreal for us because I mean we looked at Dixie Melody Boys and realized what a group uh, McCray Dove had just come and Derek Boyd was on and Nathan Widener along with um, Larry DeLauder and um, Bobby was at the keyboards and man they were just exciting and Ed was just he was hitting full stride I mean he was just as as good as he ever was and um, I sang locally for about 25, 26 years, and I, I got a call just to fill in. Like you said, I was just going to fill in for it, which I thought, wow, this, I mean, uh, this is an honor myself. I mean, I'm, if I don't do anything else beyond this, I can say I filled in with the Dixie Melody Boys. <laughs> and about two weeks after I filled in, Ed came to me one Sunday morning uh, after I had driven up to Cortec Convention to help him on a Saturday night. Um, and he asked me the following Sunday morning, do you think you could do this? I said, well, Ed, I've been doing it for a long time. I just was at home every night instead of being, you know, 12 or 14 hours away. And on the way home from Macon, Georgia, that Sunday morning, I told him, I said, uh, Ed, if you need me to fill in, I've got some availability the next few weeks. I got a few dates with my group. I said, but I'll be glad to help you. And he looked at me, he said, well, I'd like for you to fill in on more of a permanent basis. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah, I, I think you'd be good. I think you could do it. And I said, well, let me talk to my wife, of course. And uh, he said, oh, by all means, if, if, if she's not on board, it's not going to be, it's not going to work. I can tell you that from experience. So I talked with her and she said, well, something you've always wanted to do. And, you know, Ed's a class act, uh, just a true gentleman. And so from that point on, I was a Dixie Melody boy. So here we are. You, a member of the Dixie Melody boys, and being familiar with – it's really kind of ironic, I guess, because you said they played a role in really drawing your first interest into Southern Gospel. I, I thought, wow, what, how ironic. Because um, there was other groups from the area that um, I was friends with and knew and we followed and sang with it on some of their programs, but but um, the Dixie Melody Boys were exactly the very first professional quartet that I ever saw sing live. Let's talk about Ed O'Neill. He's been at it since, I think, 61 with the Dixie Melody Boys. Is that right? 
he joined the group, I think, in 1961 as a uh, fill-in himself. And he said he was building houses and just was going to help them. He had a little group, I think, called the Serenaders Quartet, which um, had um, Buddy Burton and um, another gentleman from down around Bladenboro, um, Gerald Milligan, that had a studio. And I can't remember, um, Gerald Payne, I think was his name, the same baritone. He was from around the Burlington area. And they just sang on the weekends and they didn't sing a whole lot. And uh, Abe Saggins called in and said, hey, I need a bass singer. My, my bass singer can't go this weekend and we, we need a bass singer. And, Ed said, well, I'll fill in for you. And a couple of years later, uh, Ed was um, owning and managing the group. I am familiar with 1961 because it was the year in which I was born. So that means he's been <laughs> at it for quite a long time. How um, old is he? Uh, Ed just turned 84 last Thursday. And the Tuesday prior, his son, Alan, and his grandson, Logan, met him at the golf course, and Ed played around the golf last Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Now, does he have plans on retiring at any point, or is, uh, is you know, that ever I brought think up? That's, a word, that's a word that has um, circled around a lot, but uh, he don't like to use the word retire. I think if he <laughs> – said anything he said i might slow down from full time which he has um due to an accident he had back in april of 19 and um you know when you get to a certain age recovery is a lot longer than it used to be and so for him to have be, been that back out on the golf course this past uh tuesday was a week ago um i was i was real excited and real happy to see him because he loves to play golf but he just let me know he he's he's still got some some drive in him well and as a matter of fact i would assume that if you suffered a little burnout with this covid 19 that has taken you off the road you probably rebuild that passion well you know um it's either love it or leave it at this point and um we had started working on a new album, and then the COVID hit, so that's been put on hold. We had um, a personnel change, and we're working on fixing that. And right now, the only response that we're getting from folks is, we're sorry, but we're going to have to cancel this date or that date. And um, I get emails basically about every week that says, we were hoping that things would turn around, but it looks like it's not. And I know we're not the only group experiencing that. Um, I know that our audience is the target audience for the COVID. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, it's going to be very um, difficult and it's going to be a little bit longer for us to get back to quote uh, normal, in my opinion, because folks um, of the age of 60 and older, especially if they've got any type of respiratory issue, they're not going to want to to chance because of, I guess, the fear factor. But, I mean, it is what it is. And, um, you know, you can't knock people for, for what they believe. Is We just all got to, you know, hang in here together and hope that everything will soon get back to what was normal. I, I'm a little amused at this term called new normal because new is not normal. <laughs> and normal is not new. So uh, it's, it's somewhat of an oxymoron in my book. Tell us about the Dixie Melody Boys Hall of Fame and, and how do you qualify and who decides who you, how, or who gets there? Well, that is um, interesting because we added a couple of people not long ago, but typically uh, it was started to just um, pay tribute and say thanks for um, different individuals and their 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 um their impact and and the um 
things that they brought to the quartet and, and, you know, the success that they helped build and um, their input. Um, most of the Hall of Famers at this point are still in ministry, and several of them are actually pastors of churches. And so that's pretty pretty cool that um, not only does, does Ed have a, have a gift to tune talent musically, but he does have a way of teaching people, especially the young guys, which I can't say that on my part because I was 49 when he hired me. And at that point up to um, uh, Jerry Skaggs, I was the youngest one that he had ever hired. I mean, the oldest one he'd ever hired, excuse me. But um, the Hall of Fame is, um, again, just saying thanks and, 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 a, and a appreciation for the influence that those individuals had. And um, there is one of them in particular that Ed had said, you know, everybody who came through, uh, Rodney Griffin had, had said, it's almost like a college, because he said, I learned more on this bus in two years than I did four years of college. <laughs> And so he's the one that come up with EOU, which is Ed O'Neill University, because a lot of guys would, would join Ed and then, you know, move on and, and go with different groups and different ministries. And um, even way back in the 60s, um, Ed's very first piano player was um, Tony Brown, which Tony Brown went on to become a, a big-time player in country music and, and still is, you know, as far as I know. And uh, I think Tony was 16 when he was playing piano for Dixon Maryland Boys. But um, Ed had a just uh, had a, has a knack for for finding talent and for for cultivating and bringing out the best in everybody that comes along. And um, he said, "I always enjoy you know getting calls all the time from the fellas and talking with um, different ones that have come through." Um, I spoke about his birthday um, back last Thursday, and he stayed on the phone all day long. And it was people calling him. Most of them that called were former members or, you know, uh, singers, piano players, you know, of all sorts that just said, happy birthday, boss. They, you know, they still call him boss. And uh, just um, I love Ed. He's a very, very solid gentleman and um he treats everybody the same i mean there's no big eyes and little U's. everybody just gets treated the same and then that's part of his his class and his integrity what is a night of music like with the dixie melody boys i mean you've got 50 plus maybe even closer to 60 years of music on which to fall back on so uh what's a, a, a night of music with DMB line? Well, we're going to start out with a solid quartet um, favorite that's, you know, been recorded once, sometimes twice. Um, we'll sing just straight up quartet style music. Um, we'll go back and get songs like um, I'm going to ride that glory cloud and Obviously, the Antioch Church Choir is part of the program every night because people basically demand that song. Mm -hmm. uh, without fail, somebody will come through saying, now, I know you're going to sing Uncle Jesse. They just called the song Uncle Jesse. Um, people identify with that song because every uh, choir has a guy who wants to sing that really can't. Every church has that member who wants to be a part of it, but maybe, maybe don't have the talent. Um, and we all know somebody like that. And, um, so they identify with it. And, uh, a lot, some of them have family members that maybe have passed on. And sometimes you'll see some folks start to cry as the songs being sung. And then sometimes people will laugh because they, they see the humor in, in the song. And so we'll, we'll make sure we sing about uncle Jesse. Um, we'll just do traditional male quartet songs, some slow songs, mostly 
um, up tempo, keeping everybody, you know, excited. And that was sort of the forte for Dixon Melody Boys was was energy and excitement for a long, long time. Um, back when the live band was prevalent in everybody's group, um, there were some groups out there, some of which don't sing anymore, but due to, you know, passing on and whatnot. But they would say, well, we'll sing on that program, but we will not follow the Dixie Melody Boys. <laughs> we'll go before the Dixie Melody Boys. Now, I don't know if that was because they wanted to make sure that they got in what they wanted to get in or if they were going to say, we know what they're going to do. And, you know, it was sort of a friendly competition. It wasn't no, um, you know, uh, it wasn't, you know, hateful or anything. It was just friendly competition. And, of course, you know, sharp, steel sharpens steel or iron sharpens iron, as the scripture says. So it's just making everybody better. And um, once we get done with the program, um, once in a while we'll, we'll do a little request segment. And um, sometimes that's worked out really well. And then sometimes after about the third attempt, we, do, we wish we hadn't have done it. <laughs> He uh, told me a long time ago, he said, buddy, he said, don't ever do anything that you have at least rehearsed. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I won't know I know better at looking like they were pulling off the cuff and then Glenn and George, but I can promise you they were in that back room rehearsing that program afternoon when they got to the auditorium. Indeed. Uh, you mentioned the fact that the Dixie Melody Boys – had planned to be in the studio, not because of COVID-19, but can you foresee when we will get some new Dixie Millity Boy material? We are absolutely hoping, and this is, this is a stretch, but I'm absolutely hoping when we come to Cortez Convention in September, we'll have a brand new project, brand new for us as far as songs, but it'll be songs that maybe have been somewhat forgotten about. We probably are going to redo some old Dixon Melody Boys favorites. And um, we we may entitle the album Precious Memories and just, you know, just sing songs that, that Dixon Melody Boys were known for. Well, Willie, sorry, want to thank you. Uh, obviously, you've had to pull off the side of the road to be able to talk to us. And, and you worked through your first Zoom technology issues and, Iron those out too, so I'm impressed all the way around. I feel like I have done something today. I can go home and feel good about myself. <laughs> I, would, I would like to say we do want to thank everybody for playing our, our latest single that went out. It's an old quartet classic written back in 1939. It's um, entitled I Can Tell You the Time, and it's just a great quartet song, and, and um, I hope people will enjoy it. Uh, we, we enjoy singing. A lot of people have enjoyed us doing the song, and they, they, they just love that style of music still. Um, and, and slowly but surely, it looks like that style of music is, um, is going to become something really special because not everybody's doing it. And we're just going to keep doing traditional quartet um, music because that's what we're known for, and that's what we enjoy, and we feel like the people do, do as well. Indeed. It's what we expect from the Dixie Melody Boys, and they don't disappoint. Willie, sorry. It's been great to talk with you today. Thanks so much for being our guest. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. You too.